Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel and thank you for visiting. Uh, hit the like button if you like and subscribe if you like. It does help my channel. Uh, but if not, you're welcome back anytime. Okay. Uh, Fox News ambushes Carrie Lake on national TV. Uh, this little lady got mad. Really mad. And uh, the Fox News hack, John Roberts, spoke to Carrie Lake after her speech the night before the election. He lectured her the following morning. Even though Carrie Lake previously worked as a news anchor, Roberts lectured her, reminding her about the so-called free press in the United States. And Roberts omitted the section where he discussed how today's government chooses whose voices will be amplified. But he did mention how the government decides which voices will be heard. John Roberts is a shining example of the new Fox News, a news institution that learns to the left of the cent leans to the left of the center. On election day, the sharp criticism Arizona Republican gubernatorial candidate Carrie Lake made against the press was called into doubt by John Roberts, an anchor of Fox News. During a press conference on Tuesday, a journalist questioned Lake if she would serve a full term if elected amid rumors that she had more ambitious political goals in 2024. In response, Lake lashed out at the media in general. Lake said, I'm going to be your worst freaking nightmare for eight years and we will also reform the media. Get ready to wear your journalist hats one more because we are about to turn you into reporters. I can't wait to start working with you. She was upset. Lake's criticism of the media was met with opposition from Roberts, who served as a White House reporter for Fox News during former President Trump's tenure in office. Roberts stated while appearing on the show American Reports, I'm not quite sure what she was getting there because the rich history of a free press in this country is something we have embraced for many, many hundreds of years, Roberts said. Therefore, I am not entirely clear how a politician should go about attempting to change the media, he said. The press is not entirely free. The Biden administration set up a ministry of truth whereby his appointed Cesar would decide what information is and what is this information? That doesn't sound too free. Robert saw a politician attempting to change the media and disregard it. Should we trust Roberts? I don't know. But to me it's always been freedom of the press. Freedom of speech. And so on and so on. But I don't know. It just seems like over the past years it flew out the window <laughs> just like everything else I mean geez I don't know alrighty this one is coming up here and uh, that was a very short video only three minutes and 43 seconds um, US may exploit gray zone as way to dismantle Chinese power Something tells me this probably won't be good. The United States has shifted its focus in response to China's gray zone strategy in the China Seas. A new entry in the U.S. Naval Institute's Maritime Counterinsurgency project titled Winning Without Gunsmoke in the South China Sea comes from Wendell Limbach and Eric Duckworth of the Joint Intermediate Force Capabilities Office, according to a report from Defense and National Security website, 1945. Limenbach and Duckworth report that gaming and analysis have revealed that the U.S. and its allies do not have an effective way to deal with China's strategy. They have either one of two options remain idle and let China state ownership over the seas or open fire and risk the backlash over its aggression. 
but the authors state that until recently the U.S. efforts to find effective ways to navigate this obscure situation went under non-lethal weapons. Now, however, the Pentagon has redefined capability to mean the ability to complete a task or execute a course of action under Pacific conditions level of performance. This suggests that the U.S. has shifted its focus from WIDGETS, WID W-I-D-G-E-T-S, WINGETS, WINGETS, to tactics. Operations and strategy was a wise move, according to the outlet. Rather than remain idle and let China assert dominance over the South China Sea and use legal lethal force, the U.S. is making efforts to deflate China's abuses of Southeast Asia, Asian fishermen, coast guards, and navies without resorting to violent forms, force. And that's navies, N-A-V-I-E-S. Yeah, this is a significant development uh, because China reportedly prevents its neighbors from harvesting natural resources from their exclusive economic zones called E-Z-S, e -Z -Z -S, e -E -Z -S, using their fishing fleets, maritime malaria, and coast guard, and A, or an E E Z is an offshore preserve to be used by a coastal state only. China reportedly disregards its neighbors, EEZs, by using non-military sea services as a way to invade their rights under international law. While China reframes from using overt armed force, mar mariners reportedly use force in other non-violent ways such as flooding the zone and defying efforts to police regional waters. China also outnumbers South Asian, Asian Coast Guards and navies with a larger Coast Guard of their own. By responding to these activities, the U.S. can remain just underneath the threshold of warfare while waiting for China to make the first aggressive move, thereby expose the regime. I don't know about you, but I kind of don't like the sound of that, but oh well. That's the news, folks. That's the news. Here we go with this one. This was a sting. Weird floor, well, no, not this one. I'm sorry, I got the wrong one again. <laughs> Hang in there. Uh, weird Florida police officer captures photo UFO chasing plane. Officer Charles Morose of the Florida Police Department was reportedly stunned when he saw a UFO flying away after he spotted it following an airplane. According to report, the object flew away at a high speed as Moros was out on patrol. The officer was watching a U.S. Coast Guard plane as it flew overhead. As he looked up, he saw a strange object in the sky. He estimated it, it was about the size of a small aircraft or a car. It's possible that Moros wasn't the only one who spotted the UFO. He noted that the plane turned around to catch up to the object. And here's a picture of it. And I posted the picture. The police officer was stunned by the strange phenomena as it has been stationary in the sky for a long time. Suddenly it disappeared. Moros noted that the object flew away at a speed of around 500 miles per hour. Since the area where he was patrolling is populated with planes, the police officer is certain that the object was not a bird or a drone. Well, I think you could tell the difference between a bird and a saucer. 
you know, although he wasn't a believer in UFOs, Mo Rose noted that the object looked like a black rectangular object that was hauling butt. Fortunately, he was able to take a picture of the object. I'm glad he did. An investigative journalist contacted the Coast Guard to try and find out what happened during the time that the officer was monitoring the object. They were told that there were no unusual incidents reported. Well, I'm sure that somewhere somebody had to see something. You know, just not one person notices those, those things. But um, that's very interesting. You know, you just, oh my goodness. Whatever. I don't know if I have did this one or not. If so, just skip over it. That's all I can ask. Because I'm not sure. But this is a report. It says, TikTok has child pornography and Chinese espionage problem. Uh, TikTok and Facebook is not doing well at this point. The popular social media platform TikTok, owned and operated by Beijing-based ByteDance, B-Y-T-E-D-A-N-C-E, -E, ByteDance, is rife rift with child sex abuse material, according to Forbes report. The article says that the explicit content depicting minors engaging in sexual acts is often embedded within seemingly innocent advertisements. Protect your children. They typically read like advertisements and come from seemingly innocuous accounts. In innocuous accounts. But often their portals to illegal child sexual abuse material quite literally hidden in plain sight. Posted in private accounts using a setting that makes it visible only to the person logged in, reads the report. The illicit material can be viewed in a post in private accounts, which predators access using certain phrases to avoid bypass algorithms and avoid detection. <coughs> Child sex abuser, survivor, and children's safety advocate Sierra Adair shared with Forbes her belief that black screens are being used to outsmart the platform's artificial intelligence AL systems or AI systems. Now I remember reading this, but it could be on the on the video that I lost last night. And I am redoing that video, but if you have already read this, just, you know, skip over it. There's quite literally accounts that are full of child abuse and exploitation material on their platform, began Adair. Not only does it happen on their platform, but quite often it leads to other platforms where it becomes even more dangerous. Forbes further reports that some of the post in private accounts, post in, I-N, private accounts are easy to enter, while others require image contributions to be granted access. TikTok has zero tolerance for child sex abuse material and this abhorrent behavior, which is strictly prohibited on our platform, wrote a spokesperson, Mahasu Kulinane, in an email sent to Forbes. The company maintains that all videos and direct messages go through the platforms L, I, L, or I, I, A, I. It's got to be A, I. Moderation, adding that human review is also available if necessary. Brendan Carr, one of five commissioners for the Federal Communications Commission, told NX, A, X, I, O, S, and access that the U.S. is incapable of re-regulating, re re regulating, regulating, I'll get it folks, I'm getting tired, <laughs> uh, regulating possible data breaches at the hands of China. 
My, oh my. Commissioner Carr has no role in the confidential discussions with the U.S. government related to TikTok and appears to be expressing views independent of his role as an FCC commissioner, said a TikTok spokesperson of AXIS. A-X-I-O-S. A-X-I-O-S. I guess that's how you pronounce it. Lordy, I don't know anymore. <laughs> These words get me. Okay. Well, it's time for me to say goodnight. And the Lord's willing and the creeks don't rise, I'll be back tomorrow. And hope your morning when you wake up is a good one. Good night.